people on the call. I guess we can start. Well, yeah, sure. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, nice to have all of you here in this weekly session. Um, uh, today we are going to discuss a list of things. Uh, so the first one is going to be on an update on the clinics and the, uh, setting up the agreements with health facilities. Um, so and then uh, we're going to have um, an update on CEDAR localization project, um, like uh, the summary from yesterday's meeting. And then we have uh, today Esther, uh, who is going to give us a presentation uh, on the implementation of FAIR through text mining techniques. And then we will have an update on special issue uh, by Misha and Dr. Sakinat. Um, I guess um, this is the order that we have today. And I would like to um, ask uh, Professor Francisco, who is going to give an update on the clinics and setting up an agreements? I will speak on the clinics just briefly, and then Professor Miriam will take it up from there. Okay, great. Then the floor is yours. <laughs> All right, thank you, Alia. I apologize for the background noise. I'm kind of staying close to the traffic. So uh, on the hospital update, like uh, I gave last week, but I'm happy to report that we have uh, 20 hospitals now in Uganda and the hospitals span the different uh, regions of the country. We have three in the Northern region and two out of which are actually referral hospitals. Those are tertiary government hospitals. And in the east of, uh, Eastern Uganda, we have three regional referral hospitals, which are also tertiary type of hospitals. And in the central of Uganda, we have, uh, we have six hospitals, seven actually, our one is uh, a major international hospital, the Shibuli Muslim Hospital. And in the west of Uganda, we have uh, five hospitals. So we have all the hospitals in Uganda and the uh, contacts, we have been in contact with the head of the hospitals and clinics. And uh, we, before the end of this week, we shall get the instruments across to them we already had discussions. The chairman of the implementation network at the VC of KIU already discussed with them on behalf of the Golden Africa board. And I've also had a couple of email exchanges and also discussed with Professor Miriam. Uh, for Somalia, we have the total of 20 hospitals as well. And in Nigeria, there is an additional hospital making a total of six from five that we had the last time. Liberia remains the JFK hospital and in Ethiopia, we have 20 participating uh, health facilities. And we still committed to both the outpatient form and the maternal health care forms for those hospitals that are also happy to, uh, to verify the data in that section. I'll hand over to Professor Miriam to continue on the, uh, sorry, on the instrument for data collection in the hospitals. Yeah, thank you, uh, Professor Francesca. Um, so, well, we are consolidating the number of uh, the health clinics uh, as per Professor Francesca's account. Um, it looks very good. Uh, we have a very broad range between high end uh, health data management uh, systems and um, uh, low-end uh, systems. Um, the um, one important thing that we now need to do, and I was just um, discussing it actually with uh, Abdullah Ikao, is that uh, we need to really uh, begin to understand uh, all the differences within the um, health records data management system in each of the uh, health facilities and also each of the geographies. So it could be that in uh, some places uh, there is kind of a general framework for it, a, a general regulatory framework, whereas in other places, as we were discussing in relation to Nigeria, 
uh, there might be um, much bigger differences between uh, the health facilities that participate. That is fine. Difference is good because we shouldn't remember, we shouldn't forget that, uh, you know, we are doing this uh, to research, to investigate. So the more difference we have, the more we can learn. So differences are really, really good. Um, but what we do need to do is map uh, them out. Um, there is one group of uh, Geitu and Kudakwashi and uh, Abdullahi Kawu who would be um, interested to inventorize the different health management systems that are um, in use, um, well, uh, in our Vodan population, and perhaps also looking a bit uh, across, like for instance, uh, in Zambia, they have a um, system that was made particularly for Zambia, and they have been looking at that system in Ethiopia and so on. So it, it allows us to understand a little bit better what has happened with the DHIS, which was originally uh, developed from South Africa to the like Impilo, which is now developed particularly for Zimbabwe. In Tanzania, Dr. Jeremiah uh, is also working with something that has been particularly developed for Tanzania and it looks really very good, that system. So um, that inventory and comparison would be done by this group. If there are others who want to implement this as well, um, you can let us know. Uh, but uh, this will be uh, Kudakwashi, um, Getu, and uh, Abdullahi uh, Kawu. Sorry. Um, that is the first thing. Then the second is that we need to um, ensure that the generic architecture that we have now, that that is going to be adapted for, the, um, uh, for each of the facilities. And for that, we will need to use the process of the questionnaire. And um, that will be a responsibility that will be given to the uh, coordinator. So the coordinators will this week receive a proposal for budget, and then we will also request from the coordinators to uh, send to uh, us, to Francesca and myself, uh, how they will be um, organizing the relationship with the um, facility and yeah, the process of uh, entering into a conversation with them explaining what we do, uh, explaining what would be the benefits for the clinic, and also what would be expected from the uh, clinic and to make sure that we have the information to make it uh, really um, adapted to the particular situation in the clinic. So that means that the generic architecture, for instance, if there is not a DHIS, then for sure we are not doing an output to DHIS, right? So we need to, that generic architecture need to make sense to the specific specifics of each and every clinic. So um, Putu was out of, uh, there was a, a, a huge storm in Indonesia, so he couldn't have his uh, workshop yesterday. And then here, it was a holiday as well, so nothing happened. But uh, I'm sure that this will be picked up now very soon. And then um, from each of the um, countries, we would need to have somebody participating there in, uh, um, well, uh, coordination by the coordinator. Uh, so that then uh, that specific information is, uh, comes available for each of the clinics in each of the countries. That is the next step. Are there any questions on that? This is basically uh, everything that I can say at the moment, but it would be good um, to hear also from the coordinators. I see Bernard, Jamal is here, Wondimu, Reginald. Uh, it will be good to hear any um, additional uh, remark from your side. 
Hello. Hi. Yes, let me let, let me kick start for Zimbabwe. Um, yeah. For Zimbabwe, we've managed to identify two hospitals, Mashingo Provincial Hospital and um, Silvaira Hospital. And uh, we managed to get about uh, three clinics from Green Zimbabwe University Clinics, one in Mashava, the other one in the, the main campus, and the other one at the law school. These are the, 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 the three clinics and two hospitals that we managed to get. And uh, with regards to our ethical clearance, um, Kudakwashe is waiting for uh, the confirmation that he is a student at, uh, is a student at Tilbeck University from Raina for him to get the clearance from the provincial health director, which is under the Minister of Health. And I think Rihanna is, respond, is responding positively. So we are likely to get uh, to get the, the information soonest and uh, we quickly get our clearance. This is what is happening here in Zimbabwe. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> Jamal, would you want to take it over? Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, we are in Somalia. I have as Prof. Uh, Francisca mentioned we have shared the list of 20 health facilities. Among them, there is uh, three regional hospitals, which is the biggest hospital in the area. And all of the clinics is managed by this under the government uh, management is as not private. Uh, we can also, uh, I have discussed one of the biggest private in the area and they accepted to participate in the project. And also I have sat with the in head of the HMIS data, HMIS head, uh, and I dated and I him the project and how we want to work with them. And initially uh, he accepted the idea and he, he will comment and he responded positively. And also in Somalia we use DHS2. And I think for this project, they can learn and benefit a lot as they are still have a challenge in the data management and the system. So after a long discussion with the AGMIS team, they, they we have agreed that to work together and have a fancy of this project and to implement this project with the, uh, even the, uh, the they, they told us that this, uh, they need some, uh, uh, they were thinking to have that an initiative uh, in first place. So I think this will be very good a step for us as a Somali country and they will take a benefit of the project. And uh, right now we, we, they are in, in health, in government they are updated. And we are, they were winning the, the, the next step that we are going to take. So thank you so much, and that's my update. Wonderful, excellent, uh, Jamal. Thank you really very much. These are incredibly uh, precious efforts. Um, let me go to Wondimu then. Hello, good afternoon, Prof. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, from our side, uh, actually, as we have mentioned, most of uh, the precondition is already uh, completed now. We are uh, communicated, actually, the, the officials in uh, Adsawa Health Bureau is informed about the, 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 the project. So uh, the only thing that left is just to kick out the project. Otherwise, from our side, everything is uh, completed because um, they are very happy because our team, uh, FM, already talked with the Policy Plan Directorate in Adsawa Health Bureau. So they are very happy with us. So the only thing that we are waiting is just to kick off the project. Otherwise, uh, we don't have any uh, major challenge from our side. Thank you. Over. Excellent, excellent. Um, could you also uh, report on Liberia? Dr. Yeah, uh, uh, from, from, the, from Liberia, Dr. Kabade is uh, already attending uh, the session, but the, the challenge from the ministry uh, side is they are a bit busy with other computing 
a priority. I have uh, tried to reach them, and uh, but they told me that they, they are not able to participate this session for uh, coming two uh, weeks because they are working on the policy uh, revision issue. So most of the officials is uh, uh, participating on that uh, workshop. Otherwise, they are uh, very happy to support uh, GFK. They are already, I informed uh, them as the GFK is selected for the uh, project. So Dr. Kabade is with us. Maybe Prof, uh, UN Pro, uh, Professor Francisca, maybe we need to sit together with Dr. Kabade to discuss how to proceed this next uh, step. Maybe we need also additional uh, one or two experts from the GFK, uh, then uh, they will handle because they, we, we do have only the program management side, but we need also expertise uh, in, in coding. And uh, so uh, maybe we will uh, discuss that uh, maybe tomorrow or uh, uh, in any convenient time with you, with the presence of Dr. Kabade, and then uh, we will proceed. Understood. Uh, I see, uh, in fact, uh, Dr. Kebere is here. Uh, welcome. Uh, doctor, you want to add something from Liberia? Okay. Uh, good afternoon. How are you? Fine. Thank you. Good. So uh, we are discussing with uh, uh, Dr. Wendemu. So when things are uh, in place, just I'll talk to the management of the hospital and we'll go ahead. Wonderful. Excellent. Good, and then we'll set up that uh, meeting. That is uh, excellent. Then I think we go to Abdullahi Kawu for Nigeria or Dr. Sakinat. Abdullahi, are you speaking for Nigeria? Yes, Prof. I, I think um, Prof, uh, Dr. Sakina is supposed to speak for Nigeria. Um, uh, if she's not here, I can say a few words. Oh, she's Prof. there, Sakinat. she's there. Dr. Sakinat? Um, uh, Malanka, we can go ahead. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone. Um, from our end, um, we've uh, paid some preliminary visits to some selected health facility, also to just informally prep them, as well as begin discussions uh, on the project. Uh, in the uh, because we were approaching the holidays, uh, some of the people we had to meet were not on seat. But now that um, we've resumed, uh, I think by the next by next week we'll have uh, some better updates on the facilities we'll be working on. But then we've paid some visits. We've had some preliminary discussions. I, um, we looked up uh, uh, the information flow and some of the information relevant to our engagement with some of the personnel there, but the administration of the facilities, some of them are not um, on the seats at the time I visit, uh, but I believe they will be available um, this week and I hopefully will engage them more formally and We'll begin to take uh, take them up on on the uh, on the activities as as shared by Putu. Thank you. Wonderful, very good uh, update, and and thanks also for those informal uh, visits. Really important that we have a really good and close uh, relationship. Then we go to Uganda, I think, to Mariam. Mariam. Mariam is on the call. Otherwise, I can give an update. Sure, please. Yes, the VC has been meeting with the hospital, actually from the Ministry of Health. And then through the ministry, we have the list of 20 hospitals spread across the four regions of Uganda. And there actually has been talks. He has been in talks with them. I've also exchanged a couple of messages. So they are waiting on our part to send in the letters and of course to also send across the instrument. And we're going to have a country meeting like uh, we did for Ethiopia. Which we will not be able to meet all the 20 administrators because we have been given the contact of all the administrators for the 20 hospitals. We may not be able to meet all the 20 administrators at once. We may have to 
schedule them in batches based on the availability. But there is actually a lot of progress in Uganda from three hospitals to 20 in a space of one week. It's a lot. And all the hospitals have been contacted. And then there is somebody in the Ministry of Health that is coordinating between Vodan Africa and the 20 hospitals. So uh, in fact, we um, are now um, way over our original target, which is very, very good. But um, that also means that um, um, Francesca and I will need to um, reconsider a little bit um, uh, to make sure that we facilitate everything. But our aim is to do that. So um, that is something that we need to, to do in the next two days. And next week, we will be then uh, having all of that in order. Uh, and then last uh, but not least, we have, of course, Tanzania uh, with um, Dr. Jeremiah. He has confirmed. And then we go to Kenya to Reginald, Dr. Reginald. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor. Just an update, first of all, is that um, the Minister of Health and the Government of Kenya expects us to work from the grassroots upward. So the challenge to them has been that uh, we need to do a demonstration that helps them to bring it as part of their po national policy on data collection and health improvement. So we are working so far with three hospitals, Zambezi, which is um, private, but Dr. Mtuma is also work with Kemri. So Kemri is the national research organ in the area of medical care. So if we can get the two to work with us would be very good because then we can do a demonstration to the Minister of Health. Then there is the Pumwani Hospital, which is a sub-county hospital, but it has a lot of feeder uh, dispensaries, about 105. So if we get Pumwani, then we'll be holding a very big catchment in the Eastlands of Nairobi. Then there is another hospital called Avenue Hospital, which is normally is private, uh, run by a large Indian community. Recently, they just got a, a, a director from South Africa. So they're still settling down. But um, we are following how we have been guided to work from the grassroots upward, perhaps more of a circular model than vertical so that everybody's involved. And then by the time now we are present to the CS means of health, we are already moving towards a national policy. So that's where we are, Professor. Thank you very much. Excellent. I, I can just uh, only say that this is really, really taking shape and uh, uh, that this allows us now in uh, this next uh, week to consolidate it so that then really we can uh, uh, start as requested by the coordinators team. So thank you really very much uh, for that. I think it will be good, Aliyah, to um, also get um, uh, an update on the localization from the work uh, I saw uh, yesterday uh, by your team and Getu and Samson. So um, please go ahead with that. Yes, sure. Um, so actually uh, we have uh, created the term. Uh, so let me start from the CDAR embeddable editor. So CDAR and Ghetto are working on it and the testing and troubleshooting it, um, the implementation of that. So um, uh, troubleshooting with John and I think um, they are uh, on time with this uh, uh, application. And then regarding the vocabulary creation, uh, Mariam and her team passed us um, terms that needs to be created for the outpatient register for Uganda. Uh, so we have created all the terms in uh, BioPartal, so they are on place. And then uh, this week we are going to focus on uh, outpatient register terms of Ethiopia. Um, so I guess um, this is basically it. Um, yeah, this is this is it. <laughs> I think you are muted. Well done, and it's a really, really good job. And we are well on schedule. So really congratulations for that, uh, Aliyah, and for everybody over the Easter weekend. Fantastic. Um, I propose maybe that we quickly go to the um, to Dr. Sakinat uh, and Misha for the special issue. I think it will take a very short time because then we have the remainder of the time for the presentation of Esther. And I really look forward to that and we don't need any interruption. So if that's possible to hand over to you, uh, Dr. Sakinat and Misha.
Allô? Um, can I share my screen again, maybe? Okay, so um, we so we have almost ten articles that are fully ready. Um, the 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 dark green are all in the last phase of. Um, Review. So we send them all. We have sent them all to Susan, and we expect uh, the last version to come back uh, very shortly. Which means we will have practically ten uh, articles that are ready for the first issue, which is our main goal. And then they're all related to equivalency uh, in uh, various forms. Uh, so those ten articles are the, all the articles I've marked with red. I'll put the link. Um, I'll put the link in the uh, chat in a minute. Uh, and so everyone that has an article that's marked with red on the side, um, it, it would be great if uh, an extra effort is made on them so that they are finished uh, in the coming two weeks. Uh, both me and Miriam will also be um, working uh, and paying a special, a special a special attention to those uh, 10 articles to make sure that uh, we meet the deadline and then we can also go ahead with um, publishing the first issue uh, and then the other remaining articles can go in the second issue uh, since they're all themed around approximately the same thing. Uh, are there any questions? I have just one addition, uh, Michelle, that is that um, article 10 on health information streams in clinics should also go in the in the first issue. Thank you. Oh, and then important to note, maybe 16 and two emerged. Um, that's something that's changed. Um, and that's it, I believe, from my part. So, um, yeah, congratulations. It's a really incredible job and, and, and really great, uh, great outcome of the work uh, uh, of documentation. So thank you, everybody. The, I've gone through all of the articles and they're so interesting. Um, and um, very good job. So with that, uh, I think, Aliyah, um, all the updates um, are done and we can uh, move to uh, the presentation of Esther. Yes, uh, I think we are done with the updates. And then um, with this, I would, I would like to give the floor to Esther. Um, so over to you, Esther, please. Um, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to share my screen. Uh, so I give the permission for that already. OK. So can everybody see my screen right now? Yes. Great. Maybe I should turn off my video just so that um, so that we don't have interruptions regarding my bandwidth. I'm not very confident in, in it. Um, yeah. All right. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Esther Inau. Most people call me E now, my last name. Um, I'm doing my PhD at the University of Greifswald in Germany. And I've been working on, on a scoping review um, that is based on the initiatives, concepts, and implementation practices of the FAIR data principles in health data stewardship practice. And um, yeah, that, that's, that's a bit me. So, um, I'm going to start the presentation. So a little bit about me is, as I said, I am a PhD student at the University of Medicine Greifswald, and I'm also a scientific employee um, at the same university. In the course of my PhD and my employment at the university, I became involved um, in Vodan, Africa, and Asia. I was also accepted for the Fair Plus Fellowship, which should start 
um, next month. Um, it's going to be online considering current circumstances. And um, I also published um, this um, protocol for a scoping review, which is going to be the basis of today's presentation. Uh, I'm just going to take you through what it was like, um, what I went through, what I did, um, and what it took for me to be able to reach to the place where um, the protocol became publishable. So a little bit of the background is um, the fair data principles, as um, we know by now, are known to strengthen data sharing, reduce duplicated efforts, um, harmonize data and um, connect data silos, which previously were, um, inter were not interoperable. Um, I got a notification that somebody is trying to get in. Okay, that's not there anymore. Um, the admins or the host will admit people in. You just concentrate on your presentation. Sorry. All right then. Okay. So, um, in in the course of um of my literature review, I found that the fair initiatives um, have been implemented in various domains, including computational workflows, food and nutrition, material science, and oceanography. But there was not so much that had been done in health. So the aims of conducting this work were to provide an overview of applications of the fair data principles that are focused on health data research and to map out the existing evidence accordingly. Just for clarification, the abbreviation FDP in this, um, for, for purposes of this presentation is fair data principles. I'm clarifying that because I know that um, a lot of, that this abbreviation has been used here as fair data points, but here we talk about fair data principles. So um, we think this is important because um, the, the World Health Organization has recently um, published or recommended um, the World Health Organization data principles. And um, they recommend that international scientific standards such as the fair guiding principles um, be used um, as responsible or as part of responsible data management and stewardship. So the method we used for this protocol was the Axian Domali stage-based methodolog methodological framework for scoping reviews. Um, this methodological framework can also be used for systematic literature reviews. Um, but in this case, we chose a scoping review again, because there's not so much work that has been already previously done um, regarding the fair data principles in health. So we did not expect to find that much literature. So we opted to go for a scoping review as opposed to um, a systematic literature review. So the first stage of, of our scoping review is to identify the research questions. Uh, the second stage is to identify the relevant studies. Third stage is study selection. The fourth stage is charting the data. And the final stage is collating, summarizing, and reporting the results. So when it came to identifying the research questions, um, we decided to to explore um, what has been done with regards to the implementation of the fair data principles in the health domain regarding the approaches that are being used or piloted, the challenges and the risks that are being faced by um, the, the piloters of, of these approaches or the users of these approaches, of these approaches, and um, the suggested concepts and approaches to mitigating these concerns and challenges and risks of implementation of the fair data principles who are active researchers and service networks involved in the implementation of the um, fair data principles in the health domain, and what are the reported outcomes after the implementation of the fair data principles. So when it came to identifying the research studies, um, what we did is we had two independent researchers identify studies from three databases, and this, the databases we chose were PubMed, Web of Science, Google Scholar. And then we also thought to include gray literature um, just to you know, reduce potential bias um, and see what else is out there. And um, so we categorized the search strategies into three 
categories. So, because we're exploring fair data principles in health, so we categorized it into fair as one um, as one category, and the second category was data, and the third category was health. So, for example, if we are looking into health, then we're going to look into all the words that could potentially um, be related to health. So that means we're going to talk about pharmacy, we're going to talk about medicine, we're going to talk about clinical, we're going to talk about you know, all the potential words. If we're going to talk about fair data principles, then we're going to talk about findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable, fair guiding principles, uh, fair principles. Um, there's so many potential words that could um, denote the fair data principles. When we talk about data sharing, we're talking about um, open data, we could talk about linked data, we could talk about um, open silos. Uh, there's so many potential words that could denote data sharing. So when we find all the potential words that could denote this data sharing in these electronic databases, then we categorize them and we put them in three groups um, for purposes of searching the, the databases. And then we combine these databases, or rather we combine um, these categories with and, and or, which are the Boolean operators that are that all the databases understand um, or are able to search um, with these Boolean operators. So for example, um, this is from PubMed. This is a screenshot from PubMed. But we took them. Um, sorry, I'm getting a notification that my internet connection is, insta is unstable. I hope that I'm able to continue presenting. Um, we took that. We took and 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 to denotate and then or is to put together words that belong to the same categories. So, for example, here, first of all, the filters are that we want it in English. We want results in English. And then we also chose 2014 to 2021. Um, 2020, actually, sorry, this is a mistake. Um, because we, you know, 2014 is the year that the fair data principles were conceived. So we did not expect to find any results regarding fair prior to 2014. Um, and then we have here open science and, or then, so here we have data collection, data provenance, open access publishing, data terms, repository, um, and at a risk because it could be repositories disclosed to search everything that could be repository related, um, registry. And so this is what now we thought would, um, up until this point here where my mouse is from the beginning, is what we thought could be um, related to data. And then here we have the health aspects where we have pharma, health, research, biomedical research. Um, and so th that's what we took for health. And then we have um, the rest of this data management, data principles, fair principles, fair guiding principles, data stewardship, data management, um, findable, interoperable, interoperability, accessibility to denote category, to, to denote the category that could be related to, to fair. And with this, we were able to find 582 results. Um, I have to admit that that is a process that we had to go through over and over again before we could find the perfect search strategy. Um, a lot of patience, really, you, you, a lot of patience was needed. And if you're gonna try this, be patient with yourself. Um, and then the, search, the second stage was to identify the relevant studies. So when it comes to health, Again, we said we're looking at fair data principles implementation in the health domain. So then came the question, what are we defining as health domain? And so we decided that we're only going to identify studies as relevant if, the, if, if they fulfill the criteria of relating to health and the operational definition for health is based on the EU, European Union 2018 general data protection regulation and the World Health Organization. And so that implies that we took um, health data in this protocol as um, data from service and research practice in health services, which include clinical, 
clinical records, clinical registries, electronic health records, electronic medical records, public health research and reporting, clinical research trials. So again, the clinical, the inclusion um, criteria as we continue to identify relevant studies um, has to be written in English, published from 2014 onwards, because that's when the, the principles were conceived and talks about the uh, fair data principles or concepts of practices, specifically in the health domain and not any other domain. So this is a screenshot of um, what it looks like on PubMed. Um, so you can see the filter applied is in English, some are down there, and the year has been um, set to 2014 to 2020. Um, so once we were able to get those articles, we used um, a screening tool called Ryan. And we chose this tool because first it's pretty user-friendly. Uh, I have to admit that I was a complete beginner. I had never used it before, uh, this exercise. But it was, you know, pretty easy for me to use, or rather, to learn to use. Um, so, yeah, we, we opted for it. Um, and so, for example, um, this is the logo for Ryan. So, when you're using Ryan, I set up. This is um, a basic workflow that I I drew up just to demonstrate um, how we used Ryan. Me and the researcher that I was working with. So basically you download the you download the files from PubMed, for example, into Ryan. And um, once it's in Ryan, you you screen the abstracts and the titles. And then if the abstract, sometimes you don't even need to screen the abstract. Sometimes PubMed has given you something that you know for sure cannot um, be related to health. Or for example, what, something that we found a lot is we found um, when we say fair data principles, PubMed interprets it as ethical principles or ethics in research as opposed to fair. The, the word fair was a bit confusing for PubMed. They think it's ethics. They think it's um, proper manners or something of the sort. Um, so those are things that we just eliminated from the word go because if it starts talking about ethics, you know it's not related. So we screened the abstracts and the titles. Does it meet the inclusion criteria that I have already defined? And if yes, then you read the full publication. If no, then exclude it at that point. Um, and once you read the full publication, you have to you determine the legibility of the publication. So I was doing this with a researcher, uh, a fellow researcher, but I was doing this independently. So that means that he cannot see what I'm screening and I cannot see what he is screening. Purpose of that is to reduce bias so that we don't influence each other's decisions. And so later on, after he's done screening and after I'm done screening, we came together um, to to um, to see did what 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 did he agree? What did he um, think is relevant? And what did I think is relevant? What did he throw out? What did I throw out? And so for some papers, we did not agree. For example, um, actually a good number of papers we did not agree. For example, I might have kept the paper and thought this is a very relevant paper. And he might have thought this is absolutely not relevant. And so when we failed to agree, we had a third cons we had a third researcher who we would consult and tell her, please read through this paper. Tell us if you think it's relevant based on this um, based on this um, criteria. And so at that point we consult, but if we both agree that it's relevant or it's not relevant, then we either include or exclude the study accordingly. This is a screenshot of Ryan. Um, we, when we were done importing from the three databases, we had about 1,479 papers. So we screened the abstracts and the titles um, of 1,479 papers. Not a small task, um, takes weeks especially if there are other tasks you're doing at the same time. Uh, yeah, be patient with yourself. Um, so at the end of it, um, Ryan again will show you um, here. So we excluded 1,424, I excluded, and I included only 46 papers out of the 1,479 entries that we had. So after the screening, um, this is this is um pie charts that um talk about what we had what we had accepted 
after we came together to, to debate or to discuss what we have accepted or what we have rejected. So for the great literature, um, both of us agreed to accept 27%, uh, 27.5%. And we both agreed to reject 72.5%. So for the gray literature, um, we did not have discrepancies or we did not have disagreements as to whether to accept or, or to reject um, the paper. Um, for the scientific literature, uh, here we had a few disagreements. So we accepted 62.2% of the total papers and we rejected 24.4% that we agreed. And you can see here where to turn accept, reject. Um, those are papers that we did not agree on. And so those are the papers that we forwarded to the third researcher to, to check out and give us her feedback. Um, she's still looking at it. And um, we expect us, we anticipate her feedback um, soon. Whatever decision she makes, we take. Um, so the next step, which is what we're doing right now, is um, we, we, we are developing a pre-tested pre chatting tool to extract the relevant information from the full text papers. And from that, we are going to conduct a qualitative thematic analysis um, to code and to develop the themes. And the themes are going to be based on the research questions that we had earlier on identified and the contents that are present in the included paper. We expect that we might find new themes. And so we are open to including them and to developing them accordingly. And so from there, we are going to be able to describe um, the results using summary statistics, charts, figures, and common tools for analytical interpretation of the literature. And uh, we will then map the themes from the research questions and other emerging themes during the charting and analysis will be done. So stages four and five, um, remember that this up, up until this point, the point at which I was publishing, there's still just a protocol. So stages four and five will involve um, the results of, of, of what um, we have done, um, as opposed to just protocol of what we had anticipated to do um, at the point at which we were publishing. So we expect again to report the results using the PRISMA scoping review um, reporting guidelines. Um, and using these results, then we will generate recommendations on how to integrate the fair data principles in health research. Um, because as we have earlier on discussed, it's really not that integrated up until this point, or at least not documented. So in conclusion, we expect that um, we are going to have a lot of work uh, or a lot of discussion um, around the COVID, uh, about the COVID global response, because we expect to include works that have been published up until the last day of last year, 2020. And, um, you know, that was the, actually, we, we actually had a lot of debate about this um, with my team, because we had planned to include works that were published up until July, and then we pushed it to August, and then we pushed it to September. And later on, our librarian told us, you know, you probably should push it till 2020 because that way you get to include a lot of the works that have been um, published um, in response to implementing the fair data principles um, with regards to COVID-19. Um, and so we also expect that this work will be beneficial to various stakeholders. Um, this include policymakers, publishers, insurers, data stewards, um, researchers, healthcare providers, because um, for example, in the UK, Ireland right now, the health research board has said that um, any data that is obtained through publicly funded research needs to be made fair. Um, and it's a policy that they have put in place. I think a few bodies in the Netherlands, I'm not so sure what the name of that body is, have also put in place some um, certain policy, similar policies to make publicly to make the data obtained from publicly funded research fair. So we assume that this, we expect that this data or this, um, the results of this work will be of interest to the stakeholders involved in um, the verification of data for publicly funded research or data obtained from publicly funded research. Um, for purposes of my PhD, um, 
this work is important for me because it informs my literature review, chapter two of my PhD thesis. Um, and research question one of my PhD at the time I was developing my proposal was um, what efforts have been made in achieving data fairness published in data, data in achieving data fairness in published data since the third data principles were coined in 2014. And so this um, scoping review helps to answer that a lot. And then it also helps to answer my research question three, which is what recommendations can improve the fairness of data published by research institutions. We expect that we will be able to make recommendations um, to improve the fairness of data published um, after we um, get the results of, of this scoping review. I have to say that teamwork for this scoping review and just development of the protocol was everything. Um, um, there was me, um, and then there was Professor Baltimath. So Professor Baltimath was the referee. So referee meaning that when me and my, my fellow researcher did not agree on papers that we thought should be included or excluded, we would give them to her and she would go through them and now we are expecting a response from her. Uh, so she's the head of the institute where I work at and that uh, she's primarily involved in data standardization and making clinical data more reuse, better reusable. So she's involved in um, NFD for Health, FAIR research. Um, she's the head of the medical informatics laboratory, what we call MILA and of the data integration centrum data integration center um, in English. Um, and she works at, in Germany, at the University of Medicine, Greifswald. Dr. Zeleke was, was the person I was fighting with. He's the person who we agreed or disagreed or failed to, he was, yeah, he was the person that I was fighting with all through as to whether to include or exclude papers. His research is um, based on data quality frameworks and uh, in NFD for Health, he verifies the study protocols and health research data. Jin Sak was the medical librarian. So you, we needed a medical librarian because we did not know very well how to, how to formalize or how, how to create or how to develop such strategies about youth level science. And uh, so she was, the person to guide us through how, how to operate web of science, how to formulate such strategies that give you fantastic results because you want to get as many papers um, as possible. How to say noise better about words that if you include in your study any results that are actually um, related to FAIR. We found, for example, the word um, pharmaceutical to be quite a noisy word, gives you lots of lots of results, but none of them are actually fair. And um, because of uh, because of you know her help as a medical librarian and her experience, we were able to put this together. So um, it, um, after the pub, after this work was published, um, one of the students at the University of Leiden reached out to me. And he asked me how to go about um, formulating the strategy and a few other questions. So I thought maybe it would be interesting for me to demonstrate um, because um, his questions really um, informed this presentation. Um, so he has sent me a file um, and maybe I could use that file to demonstrate how I used Ryan. Um, but I'm not so sure if we have the time for that. Professor, can yeah, I do I think that? that is fine. Uh, I think that was Yilin, right? Who was uh, yes. prompting yes. you, nice. So uh, yeah. sure, please uh, go ahead. I mean, uh, if people need to go, then they can uh, of course go because we have all done all the, the business, but I'm sure people are fascinated and there's a great uh, presentation. So please go ahead. All right, um, so um, Ryan's screen, or do I need to do a new share? Maybe I should do a new share right there. So I'm gonna sign in.
Um, okay. So, new review. I'm gonna call this new review button and I'm gonna create it. Um, so, Lin, Yi Lin sent me a file that he said that he would like to, to use for purposes of, um, of, of his copying review. And I thought, well, maybe I could help you out. So he sent it to me as a RIS file and I am importing it right now. Um, and there it is. So these are all the papers that were in the RIS file that Lynn has sent to me. And so this is now Ryan sample. These are 43 papers. Here we have one to nine of the 43 papers. Um, so let's say that um, if you want to read a paper, you just simply click on one paper. Maybe I should move that up. And here it says, you know, that gender's alternatives and public policies. So let's say he was looking at, um, I don't know, digital health policies. Uh, and from here, you can immediately just see that agendas health policies. You can immediately see that this is um yeah, I can see the future of develop or the future development of digital health in Kaz Kazakhstan. Um, this could be something relevant. Um, and so we could include. And right here it already tells you included is one, excluded is one, and now we have undecided 41. Um let's say we go to let's do this data for development in health. Um So at this point, you're able to see, is this relevant or not? Um, and let's say I'm not so sure whether it's relevant or not. And I think maybe I should ask my um, my co-author. And because I'm not so sure, let's say I click maybe. Um, and so because I've clicked maybe, it's in green. Oh, sorry. Maybe here. Yeah. Let's do that one. Let's say I'm not so sure if I should involve this paper, include this paper. So I click maybe. So you see red is rejected. Esther rejected it. White, Esther said maybe she wasn't sure. Green, Esther said, yeah, let's take that paper up. So keywords for exclude. So for example, in my case, I, I had to exclude um, ethics because fair was being confused with the, the Ryan says ethics. It knows to exclude some of those papers. And keywords for include, let's say I uh, digital. Um, and so immediately Ryan sees the word digital, uh, the word, uh, digital. It knows that this could be a potential paper to include. If you click on that, then you're able to see the four papers that um, talk about uh, the digital, that have the keyword digital um, in the title. And uh, then after that, you're able to screen it and decide is this relevant or is this not relevant? Um, you're also able to detect the duplicates and delete them. At this stage, So, you know, if you delete them, then you're able to see that um, and for once you've detected them to delete 
uh, the duplicates. If you had the reference softwares, will um, automatically. This is Ryan. I think a lot of it, a lot of it is very self self intuitive. I'm not so sure if that's the English word. You can figure it out as you go. Um, but yeah, um, I recommend it. It's, it works for people who who need to use it. Um, and once you're done, you can export and um, or you can create a new search or you can share this with your so that it, it did not find any duplicates or you can share this with your core researcher and from there you can then make decisions as to whether you want to include or exclude um yeah accordingly so um that's about it um i don't know if there are any questions up until this point um Yilin, are you are you satisfied? Yes, thanks for asking, Professor. Uh, it was a really nice presentation, and thank you, Easter, for introducing us to this fantastic platform. Actually, I've also played around yesterday. It's really useful. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, you're welcome. So yeah, thank you, Esther. I think that was uh, very useful and interesting. I think we are just going to be sad that our special issue is not going to feature in your overview, but then we'll have to do it again for 2021. So. Uh, um, oh, it only gets published in 2021? No, ours, yeah. Ours will be published uh, in the next few months, yeah. Yeah, so you will have to do a second one, uh, Thea. Uh, okay, <laughs> I accept the challenge. <laughs> yeah, it's and I hope I have more collaborators from this platform. I think so. Yes, I think so. I think uh, right. I think we should uh, we should consider that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, Abdullah, he has a question still. I see his hand raised, Abdullah. Yes, thank you, Professor Miriam. Um, and thank you, Esther, for a very wonderful presentation. And I think the tool caught my attention. Um, uh, it reminds me of systematic literature review and having to use Excel, but this sounds like a very good tool to cut off some of the hard work there. I just want to ask if, um, one is able to import those papers using Excel because this time you use RIS or, mm -hmm. um, or is it the Mendeley thing the, to use uh, or upload uh, the list of papers in different formats? Thank you. Um, so what I did is I, I did not use Excel. I didn't try. So I cannot say if it is possible or not because I never tried. What I did is I, I downloaded, you save your search strategy, you save your search history, for example, on PubMed. And then from that, you will download it and it's, they will, it could come as a, as a risk file or you could also have the option to, as a beep tech, um, as a C, C something, C, C, C. The one that comes on Excel, but it comes, it, it can also come on notebook as an as a notepad. Um, yeah, CSV. Yes, CSV. Um, oh, so those are the options it gives. That was, that was the... Yeah, yeah, that that could work for you if you're looking to go into Excel. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So. Um... Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Esther. Um, I think uh, that we will be uh, seeing you here again, and we will be touching base on the on on all these various uh, efforts to document. And really excellent job. And also thank you for really the generosity of uh, of sharing this. And I'm sure many will be contacting you. And uh, really, really very uh, excellent and neat neat job. Well done, academically thank really really much. perfect. Yeah, so we are proud to have you. I'm also going to see if you have uh, um, uh, time also to present it sometime at GAIC, but I'll be in touch uh, separately on that. Um, at at GAIC? 
Yeah, I'll uh, I'll talk separately. I don't want everybody here to uh, hold up. I'll I'll be in in WhatsApp okay. in a moment. Yeah, and uh, then I'll hand over to All right. uh, uh, to Alia to close. And everybody, thanks for again wonderful progress. Really, really impressive. Alia. Oh, yeah. Uh, so thank you very much, Esther, for this wonderful presentation. And thank you, everyone, for joining the session. Um, yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, I would like to uh, close this meeting uh, at this point. And uh, yeah, thank you, everyone, for joining. Thanks. <laughs> thank you, Alia. Bye now. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Uh, have a nice day. Bye, have a nice day. Bye, Bye. Bert. Thank you, thank you. Bye, thank you. Bye, uh, doctor. We should okay. um, um, talk soon. Okay. Um, yeah. Um,